Today, I am joined by Paulo Vitor Dama da Rosa. And Paulo, you are playing an interesting deck here. You're playing Mono Green Aggro. Tell me about why you chose this one. Well, we thought the format was pretty binary that Easy Turns and Mono Green Aggro were the two best decks, and they were about equivalent power levels. So we had to choose which one we thought was going to be the least targeted. And in the last tournament, the very last tournament, Mono Green was all over it. Uh, but before mm -hmm. that, it was really all Is It. So we thought Is It was going to have a bigger target on its back, which I think turned out to be kind of true. You see people playing main deck Test of Talents, Splashing for Duress, and stuff like that. Like the white decks, you know, they play Ray Dane and Spellbinder instead of Apparition. So I think yep. in that, we kind of got it right that Blue Red was more targeted. But yeah, we wanted to play one of the two best decks, but not the targeted one. Wanted to give some beatdowns, I like it. So let's get into the two <laughs> drops here. We got Wolfpack Leader, we got Sculptor of Winter, Ranger Class, and Tangled Florhedron. Sculptor of Winter is interesting. Why did you play this over Lotus Cobra? I think there are pros and cons to both, but it's mostly that okay. it's a snow permanent, so it counts for a brawl. Uh, two toughness, it dodges a spike field hazard. And you can use it for instant speed cards. We have three inscription of abundance in our deck, which is basically a two slash five mana instant speed card. And that doesn't work very well with Cobra because you really want to be casting it in combat most of the time. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's go to the three drops here. We have Old Girl Troll, Kazandu Mammoth, and then a one of Primal Adversary. Tell me about why you chose to just play one of this card. Well, we basically wanted another three drop. Uh, we didn't want to play another five. We only have two fives, two rems. Uh, so it's a 3 slash 5 uh, hybrid card, right, that you can play uh, later on. And we thought Trample was going to be pretty important if anyone played Black decks because they have so many champ blockers. And it turns out no one did, but that's what it, it was there for. Okay, makes sense to me. And then going on to the next slide here, you talked a lot about Inscription already, but then we have Blizzard Brawl and Snakeskin Veil. What made you choose to just play four Blizzard Brawl and only one Snakeskin Veil? Any decision to mixing up those numbers at all? I mean, the Brawl is the, the best removal, right? We'd always play four of that, but most people play two Inscription mm. and two Veil, and we chose to play three Inscription because we expected more mirrors, and in that, I think oh, okay. we missed. The, the Veil would have been better, I think, for this field that happened. Okay, makes sense to me. And then the last slide is kind of the the meat of the deck, what really holds this deck together. And we got four Azika's Chariot, an insane card. Don't really need to know too much about that, but Renan Seven, only seeing two of. Why did you land on only two of those? I think it's just not that good in this deck. Uh, the plus doesn't Fair. do that much. Uh, you, I mean, you do get to copy the, the token with the chariot, right? That part's pretty good. But the deck has a lot of mana sinks. You have the creature lands, you have ranger class, you have wolf activated abilities, you have inscription. So we just didn't want to play more fives. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. You already have a lot to do with your mana, especially with Faithless Haven as being one of the best creature lands as well. But hey, Paulo, I wish you the best of luck at defending your title, getting yourself another card, and we're going to be sending it right back to you at the desk. Thank you.